Hello, welcome to all students to this video lecture on chapter brakes. Now, brakes has a wider application in automobile industries as well as in manufacturing industry also. So, any rotating part can be stopped or we can make its speed less by using brakes only. So, it has a wider application in automobile generally as well as in industries also. So, let us start with the definition of this brakes. A brake is a device by means of which an artificial frictional resistance is applied to the moving machine member in order to retard or stop the motion of the machine. Here the frictional member, external frictional member is applied on the rotating body so that we can stop or retard the motion of that rotating body. And here the, in this process of performing the function of brake, brake absorbs the kinetic energy of moving member and this energy absorbed by the brake is dissipated in the form of heat. This heat is dissipated in the surrounding air so that the excessive heating of the brake lining does not occur. In surrounding air as well as in some cases the water or oil or liquid media can be circulated through the passages in the brake drum also. So this can be done also. So what are the function of brakes? First function of brake is it retards or stop the motion of the machine temporarily when the brakes are applied. Second to convert the kinetic energy into friction and dissipate the heat to that MOSFET. Third, it acts as a safety device. Next, the materials for the brake lining. So in general, uh, we can study this table and these are the various abrasive materials which can be used over the uh, or which can be used over the facing or lining of the brake and their properties are shown in this table. So cast iron, bronze, steel, wood, fiber, cork, leather, wire, asbestos, asbestos, blocks, metals or cast iron. These materials are having the high coefficient of friction and these can retard or stop the rotating parts easily. So these materials can be used as a brake lining material. So what properties should be for this brake lining should be there. So it, it should have the high coefficient of friction with the minimum fading. That is nothing but these materials should have the higher coefficient of friction mu. As the coefficient of friction is higher, the surface will be rough. If coefficient of friction is less, the surface will be smooth. The coefficient of friction of the material is generally varying from 0 to 1. More than one coefficient of friction is also possible, but they are not in actual practice. We are not using these. So in other words, the coefficient of friction should remain the constant with the change in temperature. It should not change with the temperature. If it is changing, there may be generation of heat and more wear and tear of this brake lining material will occur. Therefore, this coefficient of friction must remain same and it should have the high coefficient of friction. This is the first property must have for the material for brake lining. Next, it should have a low wear rate. It should have the low wear rate. This wear and tear should occur with a less amount so that the life of that material or brake lining will be more. It should have the high heat resistance. It should have the high heat resistance. That means it should not, it should not capture the heat or take the heat generated between the brake lining and rotating disc. It should transmit more amount of heat to the air. It should have the high heat dissipation capacity. The fourth, fifth. It should have the adequate material strength. Strength should be more so that it will not get wear and tear and will not get break during its operation. It should not be affected by the moisture and oil or environmental effect should not be there on the brakes. These should be the properties of a material for the brake lining. Next, the capacity of brake depends upon the following factors. The factors which affect the brake capacity are as follows. And these factors we are going to study or we are going to use these factors while calculating the braking torque for each type of a brake for the next videos. So these properties we will study first. The unit pressure between the braking surface. So we are applying some force to apply the brake over the rotating drum. So what amount of pressure we are applying to the brake surface, this is also defining the capacity of brake. Secondly, the coefficient of friction between the braking surface as previously also we have discussed the coefficient of friction should be more 
so if coimbatore friction is more and constant the capacity of brake will also be more the peripheral velocity of the drum brake as the velocity is more if the velocity of the drum is more the more capacity of the brake is required to apply the brake the projected area of the friction surface if the projected area what is projected area projected area is the area between contact of the brake and rotating part so if that projected area is more the capacity of brake will be more it will easily and as early it will stop the rotations of that rotor and last the ability of brake to dissipate the heat equivalent to the energy being absorbed it it should have the high heat dissipation capacity so that it will not get itself heated it will transmit the more amount of heat to the environment easily this will also define the capacity of brake next the classification of brakes following are the classification of brakes broadly and these classification we have defined on the different criteria first by the method of power transmission how you are transmitting the power in that we have several types that is mechanical brake hydraulic brake air brake vacuum brake power assisted hydraulic brakes magnetic brake electric brake second category of brake by method of application is foot brake and hand brake foot brake nothing but a service brake and hand brake nothing but a parking brake third category by method of operation manual brake servo brake and power operation brake fourth category by method of braking contact internal expanding brakes and external expanding brakes next category by method of application of brake force that is single acting brakes and double acting brakes this is the broad classification of the brakes and from that all classification our motto or our aim in this kinematics of theory of machine subject is to study the mechanical brakes mainly therefore we are going to study these four types of mechanical brakes in detail in that four types first type is block or shoe brake second band brake third band and block brake fourth internal expanding brakes so let us start with the first type of brake that is a single block or shoe brake single block or shoe brake uh, as you can see in the figure it consists of a block or shoe which is pressed against the rim of the revolving brake wheel drum the block is made up of a softer material than the rim of the wheel this type of brake is commonly used in the railways and uh, tram cars tram cars is nothing but electrical railways the friction between the block and the wheel causes the tangential braking force to act on the wheel in this diagram you can observe the rotating rotor is rotating clockwise therefore frictional force ft is acting in the right hand side direction if the rotor is rotating in anti clockwise direction instead of clockwise whatever shown in this figure if it is rotating anti clockwise then that ft will act in left hand side direction this things we will study in next further so the friction between the block and wheel causes the tangential braking force to act on the wheel which retard the rotation of wheel and the block is pressed against the wheel by the force applied to one end of the lever to which block is rigidly fixed that force we will assume that a p force and the other end of that lever is pivoted on the fixed fulcrum o as in animation also you can observe that if that rotor is rotated and if you are applying the p amount of force on one of the end of the lever that rotor will stop due the friction between the brake pad and rotor so next we will have some uh, uh, that is uh, parameters uh, which are used in the single block brake sorry so here when you apply force p there will be tangential frictional force ft acting on the wheel and this will create one torque that is a braking torque acting on that wheel so that that uh, wheel will stop and that braking torque can be given as force into radius of that wheel that force will be frictional tangential force ft into r so we need to derive one derivation for finding the braking torque on that single block brake or single shoe brake so let us consider now few parameters that is a p is the force applied at the end of the lever rn is the normal force pressed the 
pressing the braking block on the wheel RN is the reaction force you can observe in the figure that RN is acting between the rigidly mounted block and wheel in upward direction always because it is a reaction force next R is the radius of wheel 2 theta is the angle of contact between the surfaces here you can observe that 2 theta is angle of contact between the block and wheel generally this angle 2 theta is less than 60 if it is more than 60 what will happen that we will see in further next but for a single block break we are considering it as a less than 60 maybe the coefficient of friction of material it is a material property we have already discussed about it next ft is a tangential breaking force or a frictional force acting at the contact surface of the block and mat wheel now if the angle of contact is less than 60 then it it may be assumed that the normal pressure between the block and wheel is uniform and in this case the tangential breaking force on the wheel ft is equal to mu into rn this tangential force ft can be given by the mu into rn where mu is coefficient of friction and rn is a normal reaction force between the block and wheel next and the breaking torque can be given as torque is equal to ft into r we will put the value of ft here as a mu into rn therefore breaking torque we have got tb is equal to mu into rn into r but in this equation what is the value of rn how to find the reaction force rn once you find that reaction force rn mu is given radius of that wheel is also given tb you can easily find that is breaking torque you can easily find so first we will find out the rn for various cases now consider the first case here various cases why they are occurring that we'll discuss first case is when the line of action of tangential breaking force is passing through the fulcrum o of the lever here f t line of action and lever sorry and fulcrum o are coinciding to each other or they are acting along the same horizontal line this is a case one case second we are going to study that is that ft is having certain distance below the fulcrum point o that ft tangential force may be above that fulcrum o that is the third case so for these three cases we are going to find out the value of rn so that we can find out the breaking torque for all these three cases so in that case number one again we are having two sub cases that is if the rotor is rotated in clockwise direction or if the rotor is rotated in anti-clockwise direction first a case considered in that case number one that is the rotor is rotated in clockwise direction in this case we are have we have to find out the breaking torque breaking torque is equal to ft into r is equal to yours in mu into r and into r small r radius of will so to find out rn we will take the moment at point o by taking moment of point o you will get that rn force is moving in upward direction at certain distance that is distance x from fulcrum o therefore the couple created at o due to rn will be in anti-clockwise direction and we will assume the anti-clockwise couple as a positive and clockwise couple as a negative remember this sign convention you can have opposite sign convention as well that is for clockwise considered as a negative sorry positive and for anti-clockwise considered as a negative here we will always assume for the anti-clockwise couple as a positive and for clockwise couples as a negative therefore rn into x will be the anti-clockwise couple and we will consider it as a positive minus p force is also creating one couple at o point and that couple will be p force into distance l that distance of point p and o is l therefore p into l and a sign having minus because it is creating one clockwise couple on the fulcrum o therefore summation of the moment in that diagram will be rn into x minus p into l is equal to zero therefore rearranging the terms rn into x is equal to p into l rn we will get you have got p into l divided by x so put this value of rn in breaking torque and you will get the breaking torque tb is equal to mu into pl upon x into r this is the formula for finding breaking torque when the line of action of tangential breaking force ft is passing through the fulcrum o and rotor is rotating clockwise 
Now similarly for case 1, we will consider one more sub case that is if the rotor is rotating anticlockwise. Now if rotor is rotating anticlockwise that FT force is acting in left hand side direction and passing through fulcrum. Therefore in last case also that FT force, FT tangential force why we are not taken in the moment calculating moment because that FT force is passing through the point O that is from fulcrum it will not create any kind of couple. Secondly, here in anticlockwise rotation of the brakes, here also we will take the momentum and momentum equation will be again same because here Rn is also acting in upward direction, it will create anticlockwise couple, P is acting in downward direction, therefore it will create a one clockwise couple at point O, therefore Rn into X is equal to P into L, Rn you have got PL upon X. And if you put this in braking torque formula, Tb is equal to mu into Rn into R, you have got Tb is equal to mu into Pl upon X into R. So formula for clockwise and anticlockwise rotor for the tangential force passing through the fulcrum point O got the same. You have got the same formula for braking torque. Why? Because Ft is passing through the fulcrum point. It has not come into the picture. It, not, it has not come into the formula also. So this is the case number one. We will study now case number two that is when line of action of tangential force Ft is passing through the distance A below the fulcrum O. So in this figure also you can observe that that Ft force is acting below fulcrum by distance A. Rn is acting again upward direction at distance X from fulcrum. P is acting at L distance from fulcrum. So here also we have to calculate the frictional torque or a braking torque and for finding that braking torque again we will take a momentum about point O or fulcrum O to calculate Rn we have to take this momentum we have taken the moments about fulcrum O you have got a formula as Rn into X because it is acting in anticlockwise direction plus for that Ft, Ft is acting at distance A from fulcrum O and it is acting again in anticlockwise direction therefore sign for that Ft into A is taken as a plus minus P into L why minus because P is creating one clockwise couple at point O if you understand how to take the moments then the further equations are simple one understood next rearrange these terms rn into x plus ft into a is equal to pl and since ft is equal to you know ft is equal to mu into rn put this value of ft here rn you can take the common rn into x plus mu into a is equal to p into l so we want rn rn will be rn is equal to pl upon x plus mu a pl upon x plus mu a put this value of Rn in our breaking torque formula Tb is equal to mu into Rn into R Rn you have placed you have got Tb is equal to mu into Pl into R divided by x plus mu A so what is the difference between first formula whatever you have got for the case number one is Tb is equal to mu into Pl into R upon x here Ft is not present that is nothing but A and a value will not be present as well as here no any other distances are also not there in the fraction so tb is equal to mu into p to l into r divided by x plus mu a this is a formula for breaking torque if line of action of ft is passing below fulcrum point by distance a and rotor is rotating in clockwise direction Similarly, if the rotor is rotating in anticlockwise direction, we will derive one formula again for breaking torque. Take the momentum about point O. So, after taking momentum about point O, taking the moment about point O, you will get Rn into X minus Ft into A. Minus Y because Ft, if 
rotor is rotating in anti clockwise direction ft will move in left hand side direction therefore it is at distance a below fulcrum point and it will create a clockwise couple clockwise couples we have considered as a negative therefore minus ft into a minus p into l because p is creating also a clockwise couple is equal to zero therefore rearrange the term rn into x is equal to pl plus ft into a we want value of uh, rn therefore put the value of ft as a mu into rn take the common rn term and uh, equation will be take the rn common and equation will be rn into x minus mu a is equal to pl therefore rn is equal to pl upon x minus mu a whereas in last case you have got the same formula rn is equal to pl upon x plus mu into a here you have got a minus next put the value of this rn in a breaking torque therefore breaking torque tb is equal to mu into pl into r upon x minus mu a so this formula you have got if the rotor is rotating in anti clockwise direction case number 2 is over now where the ft is acting below fulcrum point by distance a case number 3 similarly we will see that is when the line of action of tangential breaking force ft passes through the distance a above the fulcrum point o above the fulcrum point o now here also taking the moment at point o rotor is rotating clockwise therefore ft is moving in right hand side direction it will create a clockwise couple therefore here rn into x minus ft into a rn into x will be always positive because it is creating one anti clockwise couple always about the fulcrum point but ft may be positive or may be negative here ft is acting above fulcrum point by distance a and create one clockwise couple therefore we have taken a sign as a minus minus pl because p force is creating again a clockwise couple at point o rearranging the terms r into x is equal to pl plus ft into a put the value of ft as uh, mu into rn and take the common rn rn into x minus mu a is equal to pl find the value of rn as pl upon x minus mu a therefore you can observe that in case number three when rotor is rotating clockwise same equation of rn you have got that is pl upon x minus mu a when for case number two rotor is rotating in anti-clockwise direction so these formulas ultimately will be same for tb is equal to mu into pl into r upon x minus mu a when fulcrum sorry when line of action of ft passes through the fulcrum by distance a above and rotor rotates clockwise having the same formula for the tangential breaking force ft passing through the fulcrum by distance a below and rotor is rotating anti-clockwise so next for case number three we will see if rotor is rotating in anti-clockwise direction for anti-clockwise rotor rotation ft will be in left hand side direction because a frictional force will act in the left hand side as the rotor is rotating anti-clockwise so taking a moment again at point o we will get rn into x plus ft into a plus because ft is rotating in clockwise direction about point sorry anti-clockwise direction about point o therefore for anti-clockwise couples we have considered the sign convention as a plus therefore plus ft into a minus pl is equal to zero so rearranging the terms and putting the value of ft as mu into rn you will get the value of rn is equal to pl upon x plus mu a here this formula of rn is same as that of uh, case number two clockwise rotation here case number three three anti-clockwise rotation formula is same as that of case number two clockwise rotation therefore ultimately breaking torque you will get as a mu into pl upon sorry mu into pl into r upon x plus mu a therefore in case number two and three same formulas we have got but just vice versa for clockwise and anti-clockwise direction of rotor now next there is one concept called as self-locking for case number two and case number three you have observed the same formula for rn 
if the rotor is rotating anti clockwise for case 2 and if rotor is rotating clockwise for case 3 you have got a formula as pl upon x minus mu a for case 2 anti clockwise case 3 clockwise rotation you have got a one formula of rn as a pl upon x minus mu a so in this formula if i rearrange some terms and find the value of a p i will get p is equal to rn into x minus mu a upon l and in this formula of p in above equation if if the value of x is less than or equal to mu into a not only mu it it is less than or equal to mu into a printing mistake is here here must be a mu into a mu into a if it is less than mu into a then then what will happen the effort p becomes negative or zero what is p p is the breaking effort which we are applying or force we are applying at the one end of the lever to stop the rotor that force will become a negative or a zero it become negative or zero thus the no effort is required to apply the brakes and hence the brake is self-locked this condition is very dangerous and we are avoiding this condition because in this condition the brakes are self-locked and this condition we need not require we want to stop the rotor at our will whenever we required we have to reduce the speed whenever we have to or we required we have to stop the rotor the self-locking should not occur and it is occurring when when x is less than or equal to mu into a so remember this condition when your distance x is less than or equal to coefficient of friction into that distance of fulcrum and ft that is a then there will be self-locking so we have to avoid this self-locking and it is generally occurring in case 2 and case 3 for these two cases it is possible because here we are getting in the formula of p as x minus mu a if these two terms are equal then it will become zero if x is less than mu into a then it will be negative and it will become self-locked so we have to avoid this condition one more concept in that block break is a self-energizing break self-energizing break so in case number two and three for the same anti-clockwise rotation and clockwise rotation we have got a formula of rn is equal to pl upon x minus mu a rearranging these terms again and finding the or putting the value of rn into mu as ft you have got this equation or not putting or not necessary to put all these values you have got this square bracket equation if you have taken the moment about fulcrum point o this equation in this equation you observe that whenever whenever the p into l is our momentum of force which is acting at fulcrum plus ft into a that is moment of frictional force is also added in the momentum of force moment of force is added in the frictional or oh sorry frictional force is added in the moment of force and this will improve your friction or improve your braking in other words the frictional force helps to apply the brakes for therefore such types of brakes are called as self energized brakes self energized brakes for this p must be greater than zero that is for self energized brakes whenever you are applying some force that force as well as that frictional force is also helping you to apply the force therefore these kind of brakes are called as self energized brakes so remember these two concepts that is self energized brake and self locking brakes self locking brakes are very dangerous we have to avoid these and self energized brakes we have to apply these self energized brakes next one more thing that is a pivoted block or shoe brake these are also important short notes may be asked on this pivoted block brakes so here <coughs> so in pivoted block brake or shoe brake 
previously we have discussed that two theta is angle between the blocks and uh, sorry angle of contact between the blocks and wheel so that two theta angle is always less than one that we have discussed but in some cases that two theta angle may also be greater than 60 and if it is great if it is less than 60 what will happen the normal pressure between the block and the wheel is uniform but when the angle of contact is greater than 60 then the unit pressure normal to the surface of contact is less at the ends than the center in such cases the block or shoe is promoted sorry the block or shoe is pivoted to the lever as shown in this figure instead of being rigidly attached to the lever this gives the uniform wear of the brakes or brake lining in the direction of application of force therefore usually if contact angle is more than 60 then in that case we are using the pivoted block or shoe brakes understand so for this uh, pivoted block uh, it will give the uniform wear of the brake lining in all the directions if you apply the force so but while applying that pivoted block we have the formula of braking torque tb is equal to ft into r is equal to mu into r into r but here instead of just writing mu you have to write a mu dash and that equivalent coefficient of friction you need to calculate by one more formula that is mu dash is equal to 4 mu sin theta upon 2 theta plus sin 2 theta it has a very big derivation we are not going into that much deep but remember that formula for mu dash that is equivalent coefficient of friction for the pivoted block or shoe brake all other derivation will be same just like a single block or shoe brake for all cases instead you have to use u dash in the place of u and u dash formula you have to remember that is 4 mu sin theta upon 2 theta plus sin 2 theta where 2 theta is the angle contact angle between the pivoted block and wheel now next double block or shoe brake double block or shoe brake so in double block or shoe brake uh, as the figure indicates we are using the two blocks or two shoes to be applied on the rotating part when a single block is applied to the rolling wheel an additional load is thrown on the shaft fairing due to the normal force rn when single block is applied this produces the bending of the shaft in other words this will damage your rotor also isn't it in order to overcome this drawback the double block or shoe brake is used which is as shown in this figure so it consists of a two brakes sorry two brake blocks applied on the opposite ends of ends of the diameter of the rim which eliminates or reduces the unbalancing force of the shaft force on the shaft and the brake is set by the springs which pulls the upper ends of the brake arm together when the force p is applied to the bell crank lever the spring is compressed and the brake is released this type of brake is often used in the electric cranes isn't it uh, in a double block brake the braking action is doubled by the use of a two blocks these blocks may be operated practically by the same force that is p force which will operate both the blocks in case of double block or shoe brake the just a uh, braking torque can be given by tb is equal to ft1 plus ft2 into r why ft1 ft2 because plus ft2 why because there are two blocks which are acting on the rotating drum therefore these are creating ft1 in downward direction ft2 in upward direction frictional resisting force and that can be calculated by mu into rn1 for ft1 and ft2 is equal to mu into rn2 therefore in similar ways if you take the moment about fulcrum points o1 and o2 you will get uh, various formulas for rn1 and rn2 you can place this rn1 rn2 in the formula of ft1 and ft2 and you will get the formula for breaking torque in similar ways so in today's lecture to summarize we have studied uh, what are the brakes what are the various brake materials brake lining materials and uh, what are the various types of brakes 
in that mainly we have focused on the types of brakes mechanical and in that first type of brake that is a block or shoe brake we have seen in detail we have derived the derivations so or we have seen the three cases for uh, shoe brake to derive the brake torque braking torque in each case and we have studied again the two concepts such as uh, um, locking of the brakes and uh, two concepts such as self locking of the brake and self energizing brakes and then we have seen a pivoted brakes and a double block or double shoe brake so thanks for watching the video thank you all